that we would come back with the average cost of stock valuation. We previously looked at the FIFO method and the LIFO methods of stock valuation. Today, we want to look at the AFCO method of stock valuation. Now, AFCO represents average cost of calculating your stock or valuing your stock. Now, students sometimes think this topic is difficult, but I can assure you, if you follow the principles, it will not be difficult at all. When goods are received into stock, the average cost of each item must be recalculated and any further issue of stock must be priced at that recalculated figure okay now if you should bear the principles in mind you shouldn't have a problem if you follow this simple formula total value of stock divided by the total number of units in stock should give you the average cost. Here we have a table drawn up for you already. So we are just going to fit in the elements there. All right, so here we, we will have the column for our dates. The stock received, stock issued, average cost per unit of stock held and the number of units in stock and the final column will we will record our total value of our stock so let's begin all right so the the exercise in the exercise um, we received 20 units or 20 items at $30 each in January. So we are going to fit that into the table. So we have January, January, 20 items, 20 items at $30. So that's 20 items at $30 each. So none was issued and we still have this 20, 20 items in stock. The average cost per unit, because it's the first purchase or receipt, we will still use our $30. So $30 in order to find the total value of stock. 20 items multiplied by the 30 will give us $600. $600. So in January, this is what we had. So 20 items at $30 each. 20 times 30, $600. Another purchase was made in May. So in May, 10 items were received at $33 each. So it's 10 items at $33 each. None was issued. Now, when we come to this point, because we have two sets of items, you know, in finding average, we, you will use about your normal math brains or math knowledge to calculate the average, right? Now, also in math, we were taught to work from the known to the unknown. So at this point, we do not know the average cost, right? And if you should follow the simple formula that I gave earlier, then um, you will can easily um, calculate the average cost. So let's work with the known. All right, so we're going to bring back the 20 units that we had previously. So we still have that 20 units. 
and we have 10 more units, right? 10. So 20 plus 10, we now have 30 units in stock. We are also going to take down our 600 because we still have that value of stock. So that's this 20 multiplied by the 30 here. And we have this 10 now multiplied by the 33 dollars each, right? And that will give us um, 10 times 33, 330 dollars, right? Now we total this in order to find the average cost. We total the two costs, right? And this gives us $930. So this $930 divided now by this 30, right? The 30 units, if we follow our, our formula, it will give us the average cost of $31. Follow? So $31 is our average cost. So we work from the known to the unknown, right? Don't make the mistake now to divide the two purchasing costs here. Sometimes you may end up getting the first figure, but you won't get the whole. So that's not how it is calculated. So it is the total value of stock divided by the number of units in stock. Okay? Good. So we continue. In June, in June, six items were sold for $45 each. So none was received. So six items at alright, when we when we presented on FIFO and LIFO method, we made it clear to you that stock is valued at cost price. So stock is valued at the cost price. We are using the average cost price now to value this stock. So we are not going to be recording the sale price here, but we will use the average cost. Right, so we are issuing, remember we are valuing our stock now. So we are not going to record the sale price. So we are valuing at the average cost. So it's six items at $31, the average cost that we have calculated, right? And that will give us our... So we bring back down this, because that's what we are using still. Not until we have received another set, then we will calculate again the average cost. So six items from this 30 items here, we have 24 items left in stock. So it's this 24 items multiplied by the average cost that will give us now our total value of stock, which is $744. Following? All right, so in July, another 16 items were received at $38.50 each. So in July, 16 items at $38.50 each. Good. None was issued, right? Remember, we do not know the average cost. We are working from the known to the unknown. So we know that we have 24 items, right? And we have just about 16 more, yes? Which is equal to 40. Good. 40 items. So we still have this 744, which is the 24 times the 31, right? And we have 16 now times 38.50. 16 times 38.50, and that will give us $616. And this will be total $1,360. So we have what we need now to calculate the average stock. So if you remember what we did up here, 
It's the 1,360 for this one divided by the total units in stock of 40. So that will give us $34. All right, I told you it wasn't difficult, right? Good. So July, August. In August, we are issuing. We are issuing 22 items. And they were sold for $46 each. August. August. None was received. But we issued 22. 22 at the average cost. So the last average cost that we calculated was $34. So we issued at 34 so we still have some remaining in stock, 22 from 40, 22 from 40. Okay. 34, so we still have our average cost here, 34 times 18, and that will equate to $612. So October now, October, we received 12 items at $39 each. Good. All right. Did you notice? Um, well, we, we need not pay much attention to, to the sale price here. Because we need to know that when we are calculating the value, we use the average cost. All right, so here, we were not issuing at this time. So we have two costs now. But remember, each time we purchase, we recalculate the average cost. Good? So we had 18, and we now have 12, 18 plus 12, equal 30, right? So we have 30 items in stock. We still have this 612 value plus 12 times 39, $468, and that will total what? 1,080. So it's a 1,080 divided by the 30. 1080 divided by 36, right? And that gives us $36 as our average cost. So it's December. December, we are issuing now, in December, 10 items. 10 items. Do we issue at 39? Or we issue at 34? Do we issue at 36? We issue at the last recalculated price, right? For average stock. So it's 10 at 36. $36. We still have our 36 value, and that's the last calculation. Yes? So here we have. What do we have here now? 10 from 30, we're left with 20 items. So 20 times 36, 20 times 36, $720. So um, remember, remember the formula. Total value of stock divided by the number of units in stock will give us our average cost. Do not make the mistake to average the, 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 the purchase prices. Okay? Because students tend to do that and that's where you run into trouble. That's it for now. See you next time. Thank you.